Hi, welcome to the mailbag segment again. Yes, I can't believe the popularity of this mailbag thing. People seem to love it. The number of views is massive. The last one got like 17,000 views or something incredible like that. I guess people just like watching me open my mail. It's incredible. So please keep sending me shit and uh, we'll open it live, live, quote marks, on air here and uh, see what it is. And we've got three items today. Uh, one from Poland. We'll take a look at that. One from parts unknown, but somewhere in Europe and uh, one from Elector. So let's check it out. That one's uh, lots of stuff in there. Let's go. Now the first one here is from somewhere in Europe. It's uh, got 150 euro here. Didn't cost much at all. It must have been sent as a letter instead of a parcel. And check it out. It's addressed to Sector 7G. Dull! And if you don't get the reference, Google it. And of course, it's amazing it found its way here at all in the EEV log towers, bigger than the Empire State Building. It's huge. So there's the address if you want to send me the stuff. And uh, I can't find any other info. Hang on, what's that? We've got Retro Renault. Uh, as in Renault the car. RetroRenault.com. Let me go Google that one. And I did just Google that, and well, it's exactly what the name uh, says. It's just a, uh, a uh, like a, a, a user community site for uh, Renaults, or <laughs> anyone who owns a retro Renault, I guess. I certainly don't. So anyway, go figure. Let's uh, open this out. It, it looks like it's a used envelope. If you have a look up there, maybe it's reused and that's where it came from. So it's probably, wouldn't surprise me if it's not from anyone at Retro Renault. So let's open it up and take a good look inside here. Ta-da! Looks like we have a board or something. And we have a note. Nothing else left. What does the note say? Hope it doesn't have someone's address. Here we go. Yeah, by the way, if you don't want your address on the uh, segment, please don't put it uh, on the letter because I'll open it live here. Hi Dave, enclosed is your very own XR25 PCB USB adapter board kit all the way from Ireland. Awesome! Hi to all my uh, viewers in Ireland. It's an adapter to allow you to connect an FTDI TTL cable to the open collector diagnostic output. Oh, on older Renault cars. It is. There you go. Okay, so it's not particularly useful for you, but I wanted to send you something and DeLorean's use an old Renault engine and of the same diagnostic port. So someday I'll put it to good use. I may. Indeed. Thank you very much, Chet. P.S. Can you hold on to that pink bag? A bloke down the pub said it would keep your family ESD safe. Excellent. More details and instructions can be found here at Chet. He's got his own uh, website with the .ie address in Ireland. So check it out. Beautiful. And let's check it out. What do we got here? Pink ESD bag. We've got some components. Blah, blah, blah. And that's it. Oh, not much on it. It's not even a micro. Look at that. This is an L U1. There we go. RetroRenault.com. Diagnostic ground diode. That's it. Geez, you don't need much to uh, to hook up to a retro reno. Let's have a look at what this device is. And it's just a BC557. There you go. So thank you very much, Chet. And if you're into retro renos, I guess you should check out RetroRenault.com. Next up here we have one from Poland, and let's have a look at uh, some of the uh, stamps. I do enjoy looking at stamps, so that's, uh, I don't know, that's, uh, I'm not even going to pronounce that. Maybe it's one of their cities and that's the skyline, perhaps. Not sure who or what that is. Bizarre. And uh, some obviously uh, famous, uh, a famous uh, building or something in Poland. There you go. Awesome. And it's from, ta -da, I think we have something here. Here we go, Sebastian Ola. Thank you very much, Sebastian. So here we go. What has Sebastian sent us? We have very, it's not, ah, oh, another kit. Excellent, nicely uh, packaged in the uh, static shielding bag. I wonder what it is. There's a whole bunch of, can be massive big MOSFET in there or something. We'll take a look at that huge device. Absolutely enormous. And uh, that's it. So let's uh, 
check out what we've got here. Oh, it looks like an amplifier. Brilliant. Hi Dave, I'm sending you this kit of an easy to build 100 watt high quality audio amplifier. Here's a quick history of my project similar to your microcurrent and other projects solving some problem. The amplifier was designed by M. Bittner and published on his web page. Only the PCB design is mine. I don't hold any rights to the schematic. The SIM ASIM 5, later 5.3, has become a sensation. Whoa, it's a sensation. People from many countries, including Poland, very highly began to make these devices. However, the original SIM ASIM, if I'm pronouncing that um, SIM ASIM, as in symmetrical and asymmetrical, PCB design was faulty and many users complained about the problems. Common issue, unstable operation, PCB was too big and looked like it was designed by someone who had no experience. Woohoo! All right, while designing this circuit, I was doing my best to keep the, symmetri uh, the symmetrical in both mechanics and currents that has succeeded almost perfect. Moreover, I had to fix the problem with unstable operation. Excellent! Which was caused by two long and misplaced traces on the original PCB. Aha! Uh -huh. Just a layout issue, uh, not uncommon. Um, for these types of amps to have um, layout issues and be unstable. Uh, my board is about three times smaller. Wow, awesome. The prototype was built in January 2009 and the THD is point, approximately 0 0.005. Um, how did you measure that, by the way? If you can uh, let us know in the uh, comments, please, Sebastian, if you've got like an audio precision or if you've got a, uh, some sort of a THD analyzer or something. Anyway, this design was appreciated by audio, do-it-yourself audio users, so I made a few pieces of devices for them. Then they current symmetry and shortened traces, high impedance feedback. Nice run. The most important parameter was the thickness of the copper layer, over 105 microns, which is considered audiophile value. <laughs> All right. There's, and there's the stack of boards. Brilliant. So you made a few changes, 60 by 60 millimeters. Brilliant. Excellent. Thank you very much, Sebastian. And if you want to check out Sebastian's website, there it is, flodins.info, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. All right, so let's crack this thing open, get all the parts out, and check it out. Make sure they don't go flying. Good thing is it's all through-hole stuff. So you're not going to lose any 0402 components. Let's check out the board here. Flodins, it's uh, SIM version 2, and it does, there's quite a bit of symmetry there. I like it. It's a nice, decent layout. Well done. And let's have a look at the top. What do we got here? Flodden's Sim V2 again, Sebastian Olia, and uh, it looks good. And it looks like we've got genuine Toshiba uh, TSA 1943 there. These are, um, I'm not sure if these exact ones, but a lot of these uh, very expensive high power uh, transistors are often uh, faked. So you've got to be careful that you actually get the genuine uh, ones. And, and this one here is a TSC 5200, and they're in huge monster packages. You would, if you're going to get uh, uh, 100 watts out of this thing, you would really have to um, make sure that you <laughs> put these on a decent heat sink and get uh, decent her uh, thermal transfer through to your heat sink. So this looks like all discrete design. One thing we didn't get is the schematic. I'm gonna to have to go look it up online. And I thought I recognized the name Floodins. Uh, he's actually an EV blog uh, forum member and there's a specific uh, thread that he posted on this uh, project back in January, I think it was. So I'll link that in if you wanna discuss it, that would be the thread to do it in here. Now I found the uh, schematic, uh, this is from the guy who originally designed it, um, his website, um, so I believe it's the correct one, but uh, if I'm wrong, please correct me. Now, I'm not an audio amplifier guy, I'm not really into that sort of thing, but uh, nothing strikes me as, un as unusual in uh, this audio amp design at all. It looks uh, fairly straightforward. We've got, and there's our bias adjustment uh, pot there, our output transistors, but then having a 10 ohm series output resistor just um, strikes me as rather odd. I'm not sure if it's a uh, mistake or not, whether it is actually uh, 10 ohms or not. Uh, it's not unusual to see like a 10 ohm output series resistor, but typically it would have an inductor in parallel with it and uh, some other stuff, just like we've got the um, RC 
uh, output uh, RC directly on the output here, you, you might have an inductor in parallel with that, but it doesn't seem to be there. So uh, if somebody can uh, clarify that, please do. And you'll notice that the output transistors are different to what we actually got in the kit. Um, so they're obviously being uh, substituted for some reason, either uh, cost or performance or both in either direction. Um, you'd have to go check out the data sheets on the individual devices to find out why. There you go. If you want to uh, discuss the schematic, jump on over to the uh, EEV blog forum. I'll provide the link. Thank you very much, Sebastian. That's very interesting. And if you're after one of these kits, I'm sure he'll sell you one. So go to floodins.info.